cheek shit only. Hi, everybody. It's me, Lauren Zima, fresh off of the House of Gucci red carpet. I am in full shoulder pad glam, and I am joined by none other than the most underrated Elizabeth Holmes impressionist of all time, my dear friend, Sally McVeigh. Sally has come to us in her chicest black turtleneck with a messy pulled back bun. Were you trying to channel Elizabeth? Listen, Lauren, I need you to understand. <laughs> the channel finds me and I find it. And, you know, after a little, after, if she has a little jail time, maybe she is a brunette. <laughs> the roof knows. Yes, this is a uh, post jail Elizabeth Holmes. Um, Could her blood again, test have determined? Is it a Steve Jobs? Where am I? <laughs> Could her blood test have determined if you would gray at an early age? Or, you know, it's unclear. Um, uh, Sally is my dear friend of over a decade. And I just wanted to bring her on the pod today because we're old friends, but we talk about new news. You know, Sally's a pop culture aficionado. Do you say aficionado or aficionado? A fit. Depends on, on, on where you're from. I, I go with aficionado. We in Southeast Missouri, rural Southeast Missouri, prefer the aficionado. Sally has, I would call it a Southern, but I think it's a Southern Missouri accent. She's from the boot hill of Missouri. That's correct. Um, what are the words that you say that are the people notice the most that you have an accent, Sal? I'll say um, the eyes really drag out. Um, <laughs> My brief summers of, of waitressing, if I went to the table and I said, would you like more ass? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was very offensive. Um, now residing here in, in D.C., I'm on the East Coast, so I get, you know, a, a little mix of it all. But ass is the hardest one. To really Sally, see. an incredibly successful woman living in D.C. We met in college. Do people judge you for the Southern accent in D.C.? Like, do you think they make an instant impression? I don't think so. It's less that it's more so being from a flyover state. It's more so being from somewhere that uh, is an ellipsis in their lives. You know, they don't, they don't swing through Missouri. It's not on the way for a lot of people. So oftentimes I get, I've never met anyone from Missouri or I didn't know there were people from there. Oh my gosh. I feel Which so naive. Is their, is their own loss. I feel so naive right now because we went to Mizzou, M-I-Z. Z-O-U. Thank you. And so we, I feel I've met so many people, but my mom's family was also from Missouri. So, wow. I never even thought of this. I feel like so judgmental right now because my state for that is always Montana. I'm like, I've never met anyone from a month from a, a Montana or from either of the Dakotas just haven't met a Dakota. Well, and, and in your, your defense, they're, they're lowly populated. Right. <laughs> and, and so it's, and it's also a niche market, I, I assume. And this is the generalization, which is what we're saying is wrong to be doing, but we're generalizing. Right. Well, um, you look at a map and there's not as many roads and there's, there's just less people. There's less people. That's And it, that's that it. might be why I am so invested in and so excited to bring everyone the new show, the first item on our list to talk about, the absolute on the cusp show that has just started Yellowstone. I am obsessed. And of course, I'm being self-effacing right now in the words of Taylor Swift, which we'll get to later. Am I using that right? Self-effacing. I got to Google that. But you guys, you're the journalist. <laughs> I'm the journalist. I just started watching Yellowstone. And when I say self, no, I did not use it right. Self-effacing, not claiming attention for oneself. It should have been self-deprecating, I think. Well, I thought you were going with that. <laughs> But again, you are the journalist. <laughs> I thought the one thing I had was words. No. Um, I just started watching Yellowstone and I promised everyone to bring them chic shit only on this podcast. If I had just begun season four of Yellowstone, which just started a few weeks ago, that would be relevant. I have told myself, I don't want to miss this moment. Yellowstone's happening right now. So I've got to catch up. I missed the boat in the beginning and I have watched two seasons in four days. <laughs> Again, I, I want to represent perhaps the minority listeners uh, that perhaps don't, don't see Yellowstone necessarily as sheep um, or, or really um, wow. connected that way. And you're not watching it. 
I'm not watching it. I got to have a husband who is watching it readily, steadily, oftentimes. Um, I watch, I think, a combination of eight minutes, and that's really all I need. I watch enough television to know when it's right, when it's wrong. Um, Why is Yellowstone wrong for you? It's, it's, uh, it's frustrating to me. I think mostly I've, I've seen the female character. Who's the one with the eye Beth. Beth. She's, she's, really, she's pretty much the only one. It's slow on women, but Beth. <laughs> okay, so strong female. There's ladies. Monica and there's Beth, and then there's like 20 guys. But so Monica, okay, Beth, okay, yes, okay. Beth. Kevin Costner's in it, right? Yes. <laughs> L.A. born and bred, but Montana-based, I'm telling you what. He fits um, right in there visually. Mm-hmm. First of all, this wasn't on our line item because you know how I feel about Yellowstone. Okay, um, the truth is we talked about it earlier and I'm springing this on you because earlier on the phone, I said to Sally, she's like, are you caught up on Housewives? Because Sally and I talk Housewives. And I'm like, no, I'm behind on my favorite franchises. I'm behind on Potomac. Because I'm behind of this on Salt Lake City. Because of this garbage. Because I've been watching. You can watch Real Housewives, the true TV, because you had to watch Yellowstone and you had to watch Okay, here's my issue. So we've got eyeliner, right? So so Beth, we've seen her before in other in other movies or films or TV shows, right? She she's, she's a familiar like, face. Mm-hmm. She's a familiar face, but her face is oftentimes that of a heroin addict or that of like someone who is, you know, you put they're, they're fragile. You put them out in the cold. Mm-hmm. They will crumble and die. And she has this from what the eight minutes I've seen of Yellowstone, the same persona. So she is is rough and tough and tumbler outside. I saw her naked in a bathtub once on Yellowstone. There, that was a something. It was Very early episode. Not a bathtub. It was more of like a watering hole for the cows or the cattle. Okay, so she's bathing uh, with bottles, whatever. She just seems like she is is uh, not put together. But then next scene, guess what? Ta-da, she is polished. She's a mathematician. She does this fast math in her seemingly downtown Manhattan office space. And she is really just, you know, giving it in. And so that's where, you know, I started to have an issue. And really, she breaks my cardinal rule. And this could be, this could be a hot topic. I don't trust women in things. I I, I like to know what they're thinking. And their forehead really helps on that with or without Botox. She is heavy on the bangs in everything she plays. And that's hard. It's hard to see. Um, and so because of that, Yellowstone um, is hard. And then this also is like, this is such a niche reference, but I feel like you may have seen it. Do you remember Ellen DeGeneres's comedy special from like 2004? I think it's called Here and Now. And she was trying to share, she's trying to tell somebody about her haircut on the phone, but the reception's going out in her bit. I'm like quoting her bit. And she keeps going, the bangs, I got bangs. <laughs> bangs are always a choice, you know, a strong they choice. It's and not I love, I love women with bangs. I know, I know women, I love, there are women that I love with bangs. Do I trust them during the time? I don't know. <laughs> That's... I, I will. I'll give you this. There's some truth to what you're saying, I think, because bangs are such a decision and it mm-hmm. indicates that you're in an unstable time because you're making a strong choice to totally change. And it's or, not what you can go back on. Or you're so in such a confident state that I'm jealous. Oh, OK. Well, I appreciate that self-awareness. <laughs> Wow. I'd love to hear from the people. Can you trust a woman with bangs? I'm now I've been racking my brain as we've been talking, having a secondary conversation in my own brain, which I do a lot, trying to think of a woman with bangs who I trust. There are people I respect, perhaps, that have bangs. Oh, my God. You know who came to my mind? My mother. (laughs) (laughs) Donna, are you out there? (laughs) She had bangs for a long time. I do respect her. Wow. Well, we might need to go to therapy for this. Okay. <laughs> Yours had bangs too. Wow. Who, who's charging me for this hour? Are we Beth? I think we need to look <laughs> in the mirror. Are we Beth? You're coming in here. This is a late night. We're both wearing way too bold of a lip for this hour nor for, and for our looks. We're both exhausted from work in our offices and we're both, you know, like probably going to drink too much later and get a little weird. I think we need to look in the reflective water of the trough and ask ourselves if we're Beth Sally. Correct. I, I, <laughs> that's fair. And that's how I need to, I need to look at my topless self in a, in a 
watering trough, see where I land. Now, Zima, my question to you is what is it that draws you to Yellowstone? I think that oftentimes we're attracted to shows where that, you know, there's something aspirational or there is something where we feel connected, neither of which I see for you. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm not picking up a a saddle. Do you pick up a saddle? I'm not, I'm not getting on a saddle on a horse and shoveling in a, in a hay bale. Nope. Shoveling in a stall anytime soon. You're getting there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I, I, we, you and I both share love for shows that are aspirational housewives. Absolutely. Maybe not aspirational, like character wise, but aspirational lifestyle wise of the housewives. Um, Uh, it depends. Um, but I, I love a show or a movie that takes me to a totally different place that is like, just so unlike the life I'm living. If like, I was really into, you know, like Outlander, it's set in a different time period in a different country or Game of Thrones. It's completely fantastical, but yet there's still themes you can relate to like family and hierarchy and, you know, like tension like does we get the time to- frame make a difference to you because this seems very present outlander and game of thrones are not quite you know what i like a lot about yellowstone not a lot of cell phones in the show they no, play it they off as like this. they don't have good service <laughs> <laughs> they can't if you need somebody you got to go find them so it doesn't really feel that modern to me because they can't just send a text where are you instead they're like get in the truck you know where is he find him on the ranch mm-hmm and I like that. And earlier you said to me, okay, so Chris is having you watch it, which is the right assumption. But no, I told Chris, I'm like, we got to get into this because I did this with Game of Thrones. Before the final season came out, I was so late to the dragon party that I watched the first, now I'm forgetting how many seasons there were, like the first eight or nine seasons. I watched it oh, about yeah. Weeks. yeah, I was like speaking in dragon and it was all I was talking about. Making notes. <laughs> You know, you, you got to watch the closed captions and you really get the names right. Sometimes I had to fast forward and just read quickly because I had to get through it. And so now I'm doing that with Yellowstone so that I can be caught up and be part of the conversation on season four. But I will say, I'm going to implore you to give it another shot. It's not perfect. You kind of have to accept it as a soap opera slash drama. I mean, Beth is borderline insane. Her character does wild crap. And there's like a lot of killing it's sort of like the Sopranos in Montana. Um, is it also here? Hold on. Maybe this is the uh, connection I need. Mm. Is this like a little bit like the OC dropped into a ranch? And Beth oh. is, Cooper is there a rip? Is, he yes. really, is Sandy Cohen, Kevin Costner? Yes. <laughs> yes. God. Yes. I found this. So I'll watch another episode. Yes. My attention. It's either that, maybe it's a Montana succession. Yes. Oh, I've said okay. that actually, because Chris loves okay, it. Good. And Chris is now into Yellowstone. And he loves it. Um, but I think you'd like it because a, I mean, you have that Southerner in you. Like, I mean, I know Southeast Missouri and Montana. Okay, are not geography. <laughs> like I said, I'm a journalist. I know words except for words like <laughs> self-effacing that I'm, you've lost, me. but you grew up in the countryside you could relate to that and it is again just like family drama i think you'd love it i do have one bone to pick with it and that it's that there's not enough boning i need some more sex scenes it's like more well there's one woman i mean that's exhausting doesn't beth get around (laughs) no she's really she's only slipped slept with one person on the show and then monica the one who hits her though no Who's hitting her? Why does she always look bruised? Okay, you know what has happened? You have walked she in and out of her. wearing a blanket at all times, and it gives me LuLaRoe energy. Oh. That blanket she wears? I will agree with you. Like, they, I, it's clear that they're trying to make Beth always look a little haggard. But what I can't get behind is the ill-fitting nature of her clothes. If she is someone who's making a lot of money and she's got a stylish office, she knows how to dress herself and her clothes are not fitting well and they're not coordinating well. And if she's always looking a little tired, she's drinking and smoking. Okay. But like the clothes would be on point. And I have a book. I have an issue with that. Right. Um, just call us anytime you need us costume designers. At right. Absolutely. Store. Getting a hit. I have a black turtleneck for her. <laughs> You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with the black turtle. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. 
And you know what? It looks cold when they're filming in Montana. So Yellowstone, it sounds like thus far you've just walked in and out of rooms and seen bits and pieces. <laughs> Will you give it another shot? I will give it a consecutive episode and a half. Okay. Okay. That's true. I mean, it's good enough for me to be behind. I have not watched the Salt Lake City episodes where Jen Shaw has. And I can't believe you, the priorities in your life. And, you know, I thought we were aligned on a lot of things. And bam, this was a shocker to me. I know. You elected to remove yourself from the rawest footage Bravo has ever provided. And it was just a tremendous episode and meaningful for, for all of those that have followed our founding mothers of Bravo. And, um, you know, very intimate things are happening in limos throughout the years, right? Mm. Kim said, Kyle, you stole my GD house. Um, Tamara said, Simon, I want a divorce. And then there was a six hour drive in a limo. And that was the content we got. And it was everyone falling into different roles, which was just so fascinating to me. And I can't believe you missed it. Surely you've heard some. Well, look, I interviewed all the women before the season started and they had kind of like told me some of it. Like they actually, I'm not even sure they, I think they may have told more than Bravo wanted them to tell. Like they told me all about how Janet said her husband was internally bleeding. (laughs) Oh, Gary. So you you got that. Yeah, Yeah, I kind of, it was like spoiler alert, but I still, of course, want to see the raw footage. It's like when we see the Kardashian headlines, then months later, we still watch the show because we want to see the behind the scenes and what happened. But I do think it speaks to the power of Yellowstone. And again, please watch it. (laughs) I have. Again, not sponsored. (laughs) Not sponsored by, but big fan of. Um, But yeah. Okay. So do you think. Because I had, I'd been pretty much caught up on Salt Lake City, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, but then I've just missed the past few episodes. I will say, I think what was hard for it was I just wanted it to get to the Jen Shaw stuff. Like with Beverly Hills, they did a great job of getting, giving us a little bit of Erica in every episode when we Mm -hmm. knew that was the big arc. Mm -hmm. Has it started to deliver on the Jen Shaw? Just this episode in your defense. Yes. And also in your defense, you knew this was happening. You knew some of the ins and outs and the secrets. What is is fascinating as an observer is really seeing the uh, true character or like the the p- true personalities of these individuals during this. Just raw footage of them on the on the buses and how they're reacting and responding to this. Are you thinking and, differently of some people? Has it changed your mind? No, not necessarily. Um, but, you know, Lisa's a little bit more litigious to the bone than I knew. She's got six attorneys. Lisa? Yes. yes. That makes sense. She has so many companies. But six attorneys? I, I feel like just, and and are they specializing you know in that's fraud? Good. How many attorneys is it appropriate for one to have? Right. And at one point, like, do you need to remove a couple of them? I mean, are they good enough? Are they so niche? And if they're so niche, why are you calling them about your friends? Um, she must not mean on the payroll all the time. She said six attorneys on the payroll said it and and she's calling them the whole time. So the whole time on the bus, she's like, Hey, attorney number one, what about this? I'm, I'm totally freaking out. This is what's happening. I'm, I'm wild. So that was interesting to me. Um, now Heather Gay, we knew she was sheltered and we knew she was naive, right? We've known that she has gone through this. Her sweet, sweet heart truly thought that Homeland Security, NYPD, FBI, they showed up at at Beauty Lab and Laser and um, they were looking for Jen because they wanted to make sure she's okay. And Heather true, and she's saying this with this, with a blank face, a straight face. And she's upset that, you know, Jen is going to get in trouble, but she's like, Jen, they just want to know if you're okay. Surely you're going to turn yourself in. That's, that's the sheltered Mormon life, I think, coming through. How could she think that? And she, she said, that's what they told me. Okay. So give me your opinion. Having seen this footage, yes. do you think Jen Shaw did things or didn't do things? Just your opinion. My opinion is she did things and this is why. Whenever she got the tipping phone call of, Homeland Security is at your house. She was not shocked. Mm. She was calm. 
she had an alibi mm. and she just kind of ducked away. And she, again, didn't turn herself in. I think they found her somewhere, right? Alibi. Got, she had the alibi ready, baby. That means she's thought this through. This was not a drill. This was not a drill. And she's done a fire drill with this before. Okay. So you, you're so what would you do? Let's say you are, you, you are up to no good behind the scenes and someone tips you off and, and you've got to get out of a situation. Do you have an alibi? Is Chris eternally bleeding? Or do you say, guys, there's some a misunderstanding. I've got to go to the cops, apparently. I don't even know because yeah, that would be, you'd have to, I agree with you that like, if you didn't do anything, you'd be like, why are they at my house? What are you talking about? What? You're so confused. You're so shocked. This is bringing to mind. And I have posed this question with friends before it's totally theoretical, but like, say you commit a horrible crime <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I'm still in that Yellowstone mindset. Oh, wow. Oh, you're thinking Can you so quickly think of which friend you'd call like you know for sure oh yeah and i oftentimes think you know what what i do if someone came to my door where you have to be ready where do we put the body okay i got it i got it you're not recording are you <laughs> look if life is like yellowstone people are dying. always have an escape plan i mean you go to the friend you know everybody has a friend who we know we would, that would be the person we'd call. Yes. And that's just the truth. And probably everybody needs that friend. And, and Zima, you know, I lived a year in, in a cabin in the woods. Um, a little, are you that friend state. for me? Yes. You're that friend for me. Okay. If that's what you're asking. Yes. I didn't want to I'm say it here. I am ready. <laughs> uh, see, so, so far crime is the through line of our topics of discussion. Yeah, I feel like there's a thread. There's definitely a thread here. Okay, when you say thread, did you mean red? Because I want to transition. <laughs> there's so much possible news happening. That you said you're like this is a big week. Oh, I'm telling you, the odds are aligning. I mean, there is there's a lot happening with with the the odds generation, right? So we've got Brittany was freed, Paris got married. Um, Jessica Simpson released a song unrelated to an album. Travis Barker's all over my feet. I mean, the odds are aligning. I'm overwhelmed. Wicked has is been recast. I mean, it is, there's a lot happening that really um bring me back to my teenage years. Um, and I'm a nostalgic person. So this is this is a lot. And and red really took up most of my weekend, frankly. Yes, and it is red season, and we are bringing up. Uh, the old is becoming new again with Taylor Swift and the Taylor's version of red. And when I tell you that I have been obviously I'm kind of like, when I like something I'm in it, like I'm in Yellowstone, I'm living and breathing the mountains and the skyline and the breath of the horse coming. I know, I know you're going to text and say our next trip needs to be on a ranch and we need to be sipping next to a big fire. And, you know, saddling up and God for there's no chance we're getting on a horse, by the way. Anyway, let's not right. digress. She's referring to our annual girls trips that we do with all of our girlfriends from college. And it's always a question, where will we go? And yes, I will be suggesting. And it's usually driven by whatever Zima is currently <laughs> obsessed with. <laughs> About a month ago, I was like, our trip for next year needs to be like the East coast in the cold, like glass of Chardonnay. And Keeping I was leaves. Yeah. And that was when I was kind of reconsidering watching the show, the affair again, which I loved and which mm -hmm. is, but anyway, um, but then you started watching Yellowstone and now we're, she's mountain time. Just like the leaves in the fall in red season. We're back. <laughs> we're back. So I have been, I, when I like things, I like them. When I like a song, I listen to it on repeat. I have been listening mm -hmm. to the 10 minute version of all too well over and over and over. I've been walking the streets of one of Taylor's beloved cities, if not her most favorite New York this week, as I'm here for work and I've been listening to it and sipping a coffee. And I like, am sort of, I, we just need to discuss the Jake Gyllenhaal of it all. Here's, because here's where, yeah, tell me. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Okay. I was a slow adapter to Taylor. I was a slow adapter because she was up and coming. She's like our age. And perhaps again, 
blazed with jealousy. I was like, I can't be, I'm too jealous of this teardrops in my guitar girl. Not that I play guitar or write songs or <laughs> perform music. You would like, um, but she's thriving and I'm, you know, failing algebra in college. It, not really. Maybe I did. Um, but I was slow t- to adapt. And in recent years, I've like gone back and like, wow, she is a really tremendous artist. I can really listen to all the songs that aren't just on the radio. So, and with this re-recording and, you know, sticking it to the man and, and, and the record labels and things like that, I would canvas for her on that. I mean, that this is, this is so wonderful, t- tremendous. And with the release of Red, I started listening to the songs. I got t- to All Too Well. And um, 10 minutes came in 30 seconds. I mean, I was like, I needed more. It was, it was a tremendous song. But now she's in my algorithm, right? And, and so all that to say, during the rising of Taylor Swift, I wasn't really in and out of why she was writing these songs. I knew she had some songs about some exes. I didn't realize the depth. Um, you are not a Swifty, is what it sounded like. You're not in it you're not in the easter egg I'm shifty i'm shifty okay. so she so now i'm paying attention right and um there's this scarf that's coming up yada yada and learn about the jake gyllenhaal thing and then i read into it and i am floored they dated for three months he was about 30 years old she was about 20 years old and she said guess what you can't do better than me jake and you're sniffing my scarf and for the past decade and Yada, yada. I understand writing a song perhaps when you're 20, but then to redo it and to triple down, double down on this and, and extend it and make a video, perform it at Saturday Night Live. <sighs> Justice for Jake, I'm saying it. It's not, it's, it is not. Wow. For him, uh, three months. And uh, that's, the that song needs to be changed to like the dangers of cuffing season. I mean, this is, <laughs> You've got to watch out for those people who just really get attached to you. And, you know, it, it's a little much. It's a little much. And so then I kept digging. I want to get back to Jake. But then I kept digging. I was like, oh, yeah, there's that Bad Blood song about when some dancers went for Katy Perry. And then we had a full music video with a gang of girls that, you know, were saying we have Bad Blood now. And then we have all these other she's. She's got to add an archaeologist to her bio name because she's digging for bones, man. She is, is getting in there. But I really feel for Jake during this time. <laughs> and um, I appreciate I so Jake it. needs somebody in his corner. And just as you're that friend for me for burying a body, maybe <laughs> to help Jake carry his. Because I look, the song is incredible. And I think the thing is that Taylor was able, we all have those bad relationships, those toxic relationships, those way too intense because we're so young and our feelings are so strong relationships. Taylor is able to, and has been able to tap into that, explain it in gorgeous lyrics and like connect. And we all feel that connection because we all had a similar, um, up and down roller coaster moment, you know, but I, I think we have to start looking at the song as about like as a beautiful song and not really about the specifics of the Jake. I agree with you on that. It's been a decade. Like we've got to, we can't, what are we holding Jake's feet to the fire for at this point? She doesn't have teardrops on her guitar for this guy, you know, uh, anymore. No, Taylor's thriving, meeting someone else. Like I, and I think it's really the fans like Taylor it's is the a, fans. Yes. Taylor. And look, I love the Swifties. I love you guys. Taylor is like, the song is really for me and my fans. It really doesn't matter like what the exes think or whatever, but on the one hand, look, it's, it's tough because is it kind of funny when I see some of the Jake Gyllenhaal memes and the fact that like I saw a TikTok where people were all singing along to every word of the song together and up on a screen in a nightclub was a reel of Jake Gyllenhaal's crying scenes in movies. And like, that was kind of <laughs> incredible just in terms of like the moment of bringing people together. But um, yeah, I don't look, we all had dumb relationships. Uh, Jake, for sure. I think should have been smarter than and better than I'm 29 or 30 and I'm dating a 19 year old and realized that they were in different life places before he dove in with Taylor. But he's diving in. Let's let's dive into that. Is diving in a three month 
jumped. It sounded like, well, I mean, look, in the song, though, I will say this. There's a mother, there's a yes, sister, met there's the a parent. refrigerator, they're like hanging out. Yes, he's met the parents, she's met the parents. I think it was fast. He skipped out a lot. I heard that in the lyrics. I think Jake was like an F boy in the worst possible way. And, and we, he and she was in, at an impressionable age, right? It's a formative time in her life. And she and when you're younger, three months feels like nine or like a year. Oh, remember those when I think about the way I used to go through breakups and how wrecked I used to be. Mm-hmm. And now it's it's just like sort of anything else. I, when you get practice at it, you mm-hmm. figure out what you need to do to move forward. You get better like coping mechanisms. You realize the perspective of, Oh, how this isn't really going to affect my whole life. This is my life isn't over, but it like takes time to learn those things. It does take time. And it's a muscle. But you know how, how it, it seems like a lot of her songs are about exes. And, and this is even, I, can, a- I tell you're actually, this is a revelation. <laughs> You're again, I new show, Yellowstone. Yellow. Guess what? Taylor Swift writes about exes. This is new news with Lauren and Sally. <laughs> I'm going to change the name of the podcast to oh. Culture Chic Shit Only, like uh, belated chic shit only, dated chic so shit belated. only. <laughs> hey, have you seen, um, speaking of, have you seen the movie The Notebook? <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of those books, new books, Harry Potter? <laughs> oh, actually, what's old is new again, Sally. I'm Trans- telling you, the odds are aligning. This is our moment, see, but this is, you know, there are, the our, our up and coming, our, our coming of age times, everything that we found to be novel, it's coming back. It is. And it now- is back. We are, I, I don't know if there's been a more clear example than this. We are getting, it has been announced a reunion, a return to Hogwarts 20 years. We don't deserve this, but I want it. 20 years after the premiere of the film, the Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, we are getting a reunion special with the original cast. And it really, I'm so glad they're doing it. I'd actually interviewed Daniel Radcliffe not that long ago for a a TBS show he was doing. And I said, are you going to do anything for the 20th? And he was like kind of evasive. And I I don't know if he knew this was happening then, but uh, I just... I'm so happy because TikTok and social media and stuff have really given a resurgence to the love and the fandom. And I'm glad that they are going to like give the fandom mm-hmm. what they want, which is, mm-hmm. you know. And the fandom growing. I mean, this is something that is defying the test of time. I've got nieces and nephews that are wow. fully obsessed with Harry Potter. Um, How what house are you? I'm, I'm not proud of this. Either. How what house are you? I think I, I always identified as a Gryffindor and yes, the science has said, the science has told me I'm full Slytherin. <laughs> <laughs> you took the quiz. The science of the quizzes. Have I, done, have I done the room test with you yet? I saw this on TikTok. Have we done this? The room test? What's the room test? Okay. It is so simple. I have a candle. That's a spell. <laughs> Lumos. Let's shed some light on your house. Let's let's double down on it, perhaps, and confirm. This is very simple. You do not need to I feel vulnerable. Yeah, just just don't just go with your gut and don't ask for more information. This is all the information you have. Right. You are standing at a door. Great. The room is locked. You want to get into the room. You got to get in the room. The door's locked. How do you get into the room? What do you do? You pick the lock. You. The, an obstacle is not truly there. You, you can defy the obstacles. This I'm saying this dressed in all black. You don't know what I do. <laughs> what are those snake drawings behind you? <laughs> what are you in Diagon Alley right now? What wares are you selling? Oh my gosh. Sally, this test is what are the answers. Answer? What other answer is there? There's a locked door. You want to get in, you get what? in. Let me tell you. The- oh, does Gryffindor go call their mom and say, hey, we get security to open it for me? <laughs> I'm shady. No, actually, that would be a very Hufflepuff thing to do, I think. Um, go get help. No, the Slytherin answer is pick the lock. 
The Ravenclaw answer, which was my exact answer was go find a key. Mm -hmm. Like, how can you intellectually, how can you like clever this and solve the problem? The Gryffindor answer is break down the door, which is not even something I considered. Ouch. That like sounds... we're brave, we're courageous, we're strong, right? It sounds like a lot. I don't want to do that. Mm -mm. And the Hufflepuff answer, which I can't believe I didn't think of, but again, the test works is you knock. Is anyone in there? You knock. The door's locked. You lock. You knock. <laughs> We didn't think to knock. It says Got something. It. <laughs> it says something. Oh, wow. That does say something. And I'm, again, not proud of it. Again, this is, I'm learning this in a public forum. That's just Slytherin thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't be more excited for that. It's just the chic, chic, chic shit only is a Harry Potter reunion. Uh, I mean, Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, Tom Felton, they're all coming. Oh, Rupert Grant forgot him. Sorry. Tom's really kind of the third one for me. Um, and it's just, it's going to premiere on New Year's Day, like a holiday move. Are the Harry Potter movies, this is a key question, are they holiday movies? There's always a holiday element, Ryan, because there's always like a holiday break. Um, yes. So when there is a snow, it feels holiday. And it's also on sci-fi 24 hours a day already. And it's, you know, when, when they're in syndication like that, it's, it's, it's homey, it's cozy. And they're always in cloaks. They're always in that like cold weather wear. Um, and, you know, when there is a blimp of a blip of a holiday in any movie, it becomes a holiday. Right. I, I agree. I think they're holiday movies. They're not so obvious as a film like The Holiday or Scrooge or Elf or whatever. But it's kind of like, as you said, when a holiday is in there, like people debate whether Die Hard's a Christmas movie because right. it takes place at Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I I think they, it's just you like I like I will have the Harry Potter movies on in the background for the entire months of October, November and December because they do Halloween and Christmas. In the movie. I've been in your home in other months and you have them on constantly. And I need your listeners to <laughs> fully understand. <laughs> like, hang out with your friends. You all the time. have loved the HP since the beginning. And you have never, never faltered or from that. And in fact, Zima was skit chair uh, for our sorority for four years. And lo and behold, Harry Potter always made some kind of some kind of a, a, an appearance in an unrelated skit. So you did. Was... actually, when I look back at how on brand I was, it was a little shocking and knowing who you are so important. <laughs> <laughs> when I first became skit chair, I pitched them. I was like, I have this idea. There's this new show on, I'm aging myself, but there's this new show on Bravo, a network I love called project runway. And it's a great show. And what we should do is do a spoof on project runway but what are the judges? Harry Potter must be there. <laughs> that was our skit. It was I'm telling, you, I'm telling you, when we were 18, just bold, like no, we are all the confidence in the world, all the confidence of a Taylor Swift at 20 writing a song about Jake Gyllenhaal. I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's where you needed to be. It's a beautiful time. You know, I brought pop culture in. We had God rest her soul, Amy Winehouse as a judge. She was big she at the time. Sense. And it was all the elements, you know, I mean, and look, I honestly, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, Sal, we have always known who we are, and yet there is still growth to be done. And I think that speaks to the all too well and the red thing is like, what is a good thing is Taylor's looking back at this with a different perspective now. She's talked about that in interviews. Like, you might be who you are, but your actions don't represent the growth you've had yet. So can we say the same for Jake? That really is the question. Can we give Jake that pity? You're saying yes. I say yes. You know, he hasn't been public from my understanding on this. And he's probably thinking, why? Why am I dealing with this again? Um, but, you know, I, and again, I don't know what he does in his free time. Maybe he is a little problematic. I don't know. But innocent until proven guilty. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I have to ask you a question as someone who just, makes every house feel like a home and you are one of the most festive people I know. Sally is like always bringing a fun costume to a party. She's always livening up and lighting up the room. When is it appropriate to start decorating for Christmas? Because I 
have what I think is a controversial take on this. What's controversial about bringing joy? And if it makes you happy, then haters going to hate, hate, hate. Um, I'm the, as I think say. I'm the opposite of you. I do not. Oh, like- oh, are you the opposite of me? Always, Zima. <laughs> I was embarrassed to tell you what I was doing before this. I was writing my Christmas cards. The um, I'm making, I'm addressing them. Yes, I could have them printed, or yes, I could have someone else do this for me. But I want a personal touch. I add little holly leaves. I do this, and I was embarrassed to tell you this that I was spending so much time because I know this will go directly in your trash bin. It, I was just gonna say, and you knew I was, and you knew I would judge you. Why do people send physical Christmas cards? I love my friends and family. I throw those right away. I say, please don't send it to me. I will not give you my address. Don't waste it. Repeatedly, you do this. I sent it, then I send you another one because I know you're going to throw the first one away. I'm hoping Chris will pick up the next one and say, okay, we need to put this on the refrigerator. Um, we need to share our friends and family and the blessings. I don't Scrooge. a Christmas card. In the age of social media, I see you, I speak to you, I have a cell phone to get in touch with you. I know what's happening. Take a photo and post it on Instagram. And I'll be like, oh, look at your beautiful Christmas photo. Talk to me about what you like about the holidays. <laughs> look, okay, hot take. Why don't I, you cut some things? Why don't you cut some things? And oh I won't trust you anymore. I'm losing your trust. I don't think people should be decorating for Christmas before Thanksgiving. Because? Because I just think that Thanksgiving, like, well, I mean, look at this. Point. Neither to do. What are we going to do? Put a turkey. I mean, it's kind of a controversial holiday. Yeah, there's a lot of there. Are, there's a lot to put up. There's a lot of time and and investment into Christmas decorations, and you're going to put maybe, them up. I, you know what? I'm going to pose this. I don't know. Is it time to get rid of Thanksgiving? Because we want to, we pass over it anyway. I eat the same food on Christmas as I do on Thanksgiving. I, we, we have, at the very least, raised some questions about the historical accuracy of what it represents. Um, I think at its best, Thanksgiving is about being thankful. And let's just like take that as for what it is. But it doesn't that lead into being thankful during Christmas. Or, like, or we're supposed Christmas. to be thankful at Christmas too, though, like grateful and like getting perspective. Why not just, let's forget Thanksgiving. It's See, like, Thanksgiving is there for you. So people slow down and pump the brakes on Christmas decorations. You are why Thanksgiving is still hanging around. You know and what? Now we have time to like watch a parade and football and, and things like that. And oh, then, you, know, you know what? Maybe that's around right. in a sweater for the next four weeks. That's it's the kickoff of the full holiday season. Again, I don't have a great argument as to why we need Thanksgiving particularly. Um, but we do need an, um, appetizer for the full holiday fest. And <laughs> See, I do recall, you also decorated aggressively for Halloween last year. And is that yeah, because of Harry Potter, because of Harry Potter. <laughs> okay. And Halloween is like fun and costumes and candy. Thanksgiving doesn't have anything. We don't have costumes. We don't have parties. Like maybe you can have a friend's giving, but the focus is just, Again, on eating the really? same. Like it, it's very starchy. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I forgot about the football thing. You're right. It's like all about football, which is not for me. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. What are you doing? Right. This I knew we would disagree on this. I knew we would disagree. I'm that's why I skip to Christmas. <laughs> and that's why I'm making, I'm already, you'll get this in the mail before Thanksgiving. So put it on the fridge. <laughs> Oh, well, Sal, I love you. And I'm so glad to have spoken and talked through all of these pop culture news moments, um, including, again, just the absolute latest. Watch the notebook. <laughs> yeah, the notebook. Um, so glad, like, you know, absolutely loving the new song from NSYNC. Um, <laughs> Yellowstone and Red and Harry Potter and all the things old being new again, but maybe the old thing going away, aka Thanksgiving. I don't know. Anyway, um, each week we do chic of the week and shit of the week. I will go first with mine. And then if you have other suggestions, please let me know. But my chic of the week is that Britney Spears is free, free Britney. We did it. I am just so overjoyed that this woman will have the ownership of her life to make her own decisions, considering she is a working woman out there in the world and deserves to run her own money how she wants to. 
And any other, uh, any alternate candidates for Shade of the Week? I do. I have one. I have one. I've, I'd like to uh, present yeah. Adele. Adele. Oh, uh, she, great of week for the ladies. A great week for the ladies. And, 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 you know, they call it a concert. I think that's misleading. It was, a, it was um, really a variety show. So look out, Carol Burnett. Burnett. I mean, Adele had, um, she was doing comedy bits during the concert. It was funny. She was laughing into her mug quite a bit. There was a lot of good, like celebrity B-roll, a lot of, you know, great names out there laughing at her. Jesse Teller Ferguson, Drake, Lizzo, you name it. Everyone was there. Bingo. Oprah, Oprah, Gail, let's be real. Um, And she also just looked fantastic. She was wearing Saturn earrings, which, you know, she's taking over the universe. Very funny. Also in front of Griffith Observatory. Um, she's having a great collarbone moment oh. and both she and Oprah, which I think is, I'm really leaning into, I'm having a very monochrome moment right now. I am currently also, but, um, every, just a one color, they're both in like an ivory and a white, just, it was great. It was great. So you're right. Adele has done such an excellent job of like, we don't get a lot of Adele, but then when we do get her, yeah, it's so incredible. You know what my shit of the week is? I've just decided that her freaking album isn't out yet. Is it not? <laughs> it's still not out. We've still only gotten one song. Oh, as of oh my gosh. It's, it's still not out. out. It's still not out. It's out on the 19th. It's out on Friday, tomorrow. But you want my Christmas card by then. <laughs> <laughs> like, can we just get the album, Adele? I've been listening to Easy on Me for on Beyond Repeat. Thank God all too well came into the picture. And I've been listening to a lot of Taylor and old Adele to try to satisfy my need, but like, I, I can't believe we haven't at least had a second single yet. Oh my gosh. Oh, I it's, it's because she's working on her comedy bit. I'm telling you, she was wow. great. Ending the jokes. I just totally contradicted myself. Cause I'm like, you know, Adele doesn't, we don't hear from her a lot, but when we do, it's great. Now I'm like, where's the fucking album Adele? I'm going to need my <laughs> drop the she's album. Like, I, just did a, I did an hour and a half special for you all. Two days ago. I've been waiting six years for the new music. Six years. <laughs> She's been living her life. <laughs> Divorcing, mothering. The way Adele says divorce. 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 <laughs> <laughs> God, I would love for Adele to pop into the Harry Potter reunion. I wonder if she's a fan. She's gotta be. She's gotta be. She's All right. Pulse. Sal Gal, love you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, whether you be Sal or whether you be Elizabeth Holmes. And Thank you for um, me. <laughs> Can we have one more time? No, no. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Everyone, no thank you for listening. Um, like I said, I just wanted to have my dear friend Sally on to talk and laugh together. Um, and please tell your friends about Chic Shit Only. They can find it on all uh, podcast platforms. I also post the video to my IGTV and a YouTube channel. So you can check it out there. So please tell your friends and, um, that's all. And we'll be back next week and, uh, find me on Instagram on November 19th to discuss the Adele album. Also the new Ghostbusters comes out and it's so good. I laughed. I cried three times. Everybody go see it November 19th. That's all not sponsored. Just good. Love you. The odds are coming back. You're I'm telling you, I'm on this. We are, I'm having, I, I peaked at when I was 16. I really do believe that because I felt the most like myself and there are all these things coming back. I it's don't real. I feel hearing about that. I really think we I peaked at 16. What of it? I've peaked high. <laughs> we are Beth. Right. We are Beth. And I think we need to face that. And we're going to, uh, we're going to text about it as soon as we get off this call. I'm going to have to watch this show. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.